I've been an iOS developer for more than 11 years now. And trust me, I learned quite a lot. And of course, I made a lot of mistakes. Not just mistakes, but mistakes in learning how to code. I'm Alex from developer.com and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you do want to learn how to avoid the mistakes I made as a junior developer. So let's just jump right in. If I could start all over again, this is how I would learn to code. Uh, we are going to take a look at three tips that I have for you. And at the end, make sure that you stay till the end because at the end, I will have a bonus one for you. So yeah, three things that I wish uh, I would have done differently and I would definitely do the differently if I would start all over again in coding. And maybe you are at the beginning of your journey, then welcome. This is the best uh, place to start. Uh, learn to three things I would do differently in learning how to code. And um, just a little bit about me in a nutshell. I'm a self-taught iOS developer. I've been doing this for more than 11 years. So since 2011, I happen to love teaching and also to love learning and um, also I love to make mistakes. Uh, we will get uh, to that part uh, at the later stage of this video. But basically uh, that's it. I'm a self-taught iOS developer. I run my own company. Uh, this has been my passion for more than 11 years teaching and learning how to code and of course coding out build, building projects. Okay, and if you do want to uh, learn how to build these projects or how to learn Swift UI or iOS in general, go ahead and take a look at the mentoring sessions that I offer. It's a one-on-one -on -one, 60 minute Zoom call with me where we can discuss any topic that you like in uh, iOS, Swift, Swift UI, and so forth. So again, it's at developer.com slash mentoring. Now, the first thing that I would do differently is ask questions better. So yeah, you don't really know how to ask questions the, the perfect way or the better way uh, since you don't really know what developers do or they, they think like. So uh, here is a little bit of breakdown how you should ask other developers. But for that, uh, why do we even need to ask other developers these questions? Well, because it's the easiest way to level up. You know, you have a question and then you ask somebody who has done this, already been there, done that, and uh, they would gladly, uh, in my experience, most of the developers online would gladly help you out with few tips and tricks and how to do this stuff. So you don't have to research, um, take a look at the documentation with long hours. Uh, yeah, you can save up time. And of course, you can also make some friendships. Now, this is something that you should definitely avoid and the beginner developers do this all the time. So they come up to me and say something is not working. Like, I don't know, the, the view is not displaying or uh, CocoaPods is not loading or um, yeah, something like that. It's something is not working. Now that is the most annoying thing because I can do any, I cannot do anything with that something is not working, okay, that's just a statement. You, you didn't really ask me anything. Well, you did ask me to solve your problem, but I cannot solve your problem because I don't have any details, for example. So let's take a look at a few of the uh, pieces of a better question. Now, how to ask, uh, ask better questions? So think of it like this. Uh, you want to let me know what did you expect to happen. So that's the first thing. So maybe you wanted um, an authentication view to be presented or you wanted a file to be downloaded or something like that. Now, what is the result? So basically you just clicked on the button and the file did not download. Basically, that's the result. The file did not download. Now, you want to include as many errors and logs and any, any specific things that uh, map me out what the process of what uh, you expected to be, uh, well, the process of how the result came to be about is. So let's say uh, I tapped on the button and then this is the error that I get 
and I did not get the file downloaded, for example. Also, yeah, logs are really, really great because they just kind of tell you what happens over time. And that's really, really important in, in programming. So yeah, include as much errors and logs as possible into your question. And then include what you have already tried so far. So yeah, I usually get these uh, uh, questions like, uh, okay, this is my question and what have you tried to solve this question? So don't uh, ask the question like, okay, the other developer is like he needs to or has a real obligation to solve your problem. And usually when we try to fix other, pro other persons, people's problem, we kind of tend to do the same thing like we Google around and find a solution. It doesn't work. Then we uh, think about it, try another angle. It doesn't really work and so forth. So uh, if you are really a good uh, asker, then you want to avoid me doing the same thing as you already done and uh, the result is not as expected. So yeah, include what you have already tried to do because then I can just skip that part and uh, work on the real solution. Okay, the second thing uh, from the three of the things that I would uh, definitely uh, do if I started coding uh, today is learn to use source control. Now source control is like, Okay, you have your code and you did save it on your local machine. Maybe you have a local Git repository for that, but you really, really want to have also a remote repository. And this is where source control comes in. Uh, you want to have your work saved. And also source control is not just about saving, it's about freedom, freedom in uh, 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 to, like experiment with stuff. And before we get into the experiment, let me just tell you the time when I lost a client. So back then I was, I was working like uh, in this, like around two years and I was just using local Git. So I was just saving the files on my local machine and what gives? <laughs> it crashed and I could not restart my computer. So all of the files, all of the projects were lost. I have to did, do a clean install of Mac OS and uh, back then it was uh, OS X, <laughs> if you remember that. So I did to have to have a clean install and I lost all of the files. So I lost also the client. So don't be me when I tell you go ahead and do have source control, learn about source control. And uh, let's just take a look at a few examples. So why is source control, source control so important? Well, you can break things. You can experiment stress-free. So for example, if you want to, uh, you do have kind of a working code and that's, that's really nice, but you want to experiment with a new feature and you don't really want to tinker with the working code. So you create a new branch. That is what branches are for. You create a new branch from the main and then you experiment. Maybe, some, maybe many things will break uh, and then you just learn from them, fix them, all of that stuff. And then once you are done and you are satisfied with it, you merge that branch into the main branch. So yeah, that's, that's why it's really, really awesome to have source control. Also, just remember there's no such thing as perfect code. Now, how does that tie into source control? Well, when you are starting to type out some code, you, you do want to save it and you do want to save it in a perfect state, like it's really, really working and it's, you are really satisfied with it. Well, you don't really need to do that because with source control, you, can, you are already saving all of the steps that you have been working on. So let's say, for example, if you just made a mess out of your code, you can just revert it back and that's, that's perfectly fine. So yeah, uh, there's no such thing as perfect code. Don't aim for it. Uh, aim for working code, uh, readable code, understandable code for other people, all of that stuff. Uh, and um, I did talk a lot about this in uh, another video on my YouTube channel that I will link to at the end of this video. So uh, also make sure that you learn from your mistakes, but how can you learn from your mistakes? Well, you do have to make mistakes first. And yeah, don't do that on the working copy of your project. Create a new branch, experiment, make some mistakes, 
maybe delete that whole branch if you want to, but this is how you can learn from those mistakes. Okay, so before we get into the third uh, thing that I would do differently, let's pick our winner for uh, the previous video. So yeah, uh, you can just be a winner, win a 60 minute Zoom call with me for free if you just comment, share this video and like this video. So yeah, I'm just going to pick one winner from the previous video. So uh, let's just go into our Safari and uh, then I will just share and grab this copy a link and let's just paste it in there. Let's just fetch all of the comments right over there. There we go. Now let's pick a winner. There we go. And peer view points says good one Alex. Well, thank you very much for the compliment there on the video. Peer view point, make sure that you contact me at support at rebeloper.com with the email address that you have made this comment with and I will see you in the free mentoring session. Okay, let's go back to our uh, slide slide right over here and take a look at the third thing that I would do differently. And this is kind of something that I learned along the way to be a specialist, not the generalist. So uh, what do I mean by that? For example, when you are starting to code, let's say in iOS, uh, you have your iPhone app and it looks really, really great. You are tempted to do that also on an iPad. Well, that's relatively simple and easy, but still. And then you want to uh, uh, see it on the Mac. Well, that's really, really something else. And then you want to see it on a watch app, on a watch OS. You want to learn Mac OS also, so create a Mac app. So yeah, don't be a generalist because then you will learn a few. Be, uh, do not be one mile wide and one inch deep. Be one inch wide and one mile deep. This is what I always say. And this is what the path that I took. I have been working only for iOS. So I am a solely iOS developer. In rare cases, I do touch watchOS, macOS or tvOS. But then again, this is why people trust me. And uh, who would you trust? The one that is a jack of all trades or a specialist that you do know that, okay, for example, in my case, that I have been a specialist for more, many, many years in iOS, iOS only, and then, or the other guy is macOS, iOS, Android, maybe you'd, uh, uh, Unity or JavaScript. Well, you would just go for the specialist, I bet you and other people's would. So if you want yourself to be a real good uh, marketed, then uh, this is what I highly encourage you. Be a specialist in your own field. Pick one field and then just stick to it. Okay, uh, and this is my last tip for today. Use your development time wisely because time is the only thing that cannot be put back. It cannot be bought. You cannot uh, reverse it. So yeah, use your uh, development time wisely. Now, how to do that? Uh, you can check out this video right over here about the 60, 30, 30, 10 rule of coding where I talk all about time management and all of that stuff.